All this we're talking about is free sound. <laughs> what we're talking about, about is folk music. Okay, no, so, no, no, so no, I, want, I want to tell you a story. It, it's about our experience in South Bend. Yes, I don't know whether you went through this piano? in the state of Wisconsin, but in South Bend, Indiana, we, the biggest battle since the American Civil War was whether to go on daylight savings time or not. And so it, was, it divided the entire country. It was like this Still fratricidal, divided. you know, yes and no. So uh, it wasn't the first time it happened. There was, in the 1970s, there was a woman who got on a radio talk show, and she said, it's not a good idea to go on daylight savings time. And the reason why is because her, la her lawn was already brown. And if it got one more hour a day of sleep, <laughs> <laughs> it would kill the grass completely. <laughs> now, this lady's argument carried the day in Indiana for 40 years. <laughs> and then they up and changed. And so in the, in the moment of change, I thought, I have to come to the defense of Indiana traditions. Hoosiers don't change their clocks. And so I wrote a song. <laughs> With your permission, I will sing the song about daylight. It's probably the only time you will ever hear about the song you'll ever hear about daylight. And you tell me what kind of music this is, Eric. Definitely sacred. Some say Hoosiers are dumb as rock. Sunday afternoon, I would ride my bike to Lake Michigan, okay? Now, they told me not to be in the sun between 10 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon because I would get skin cancer. <laughs> Trouble was, when I got to, uh, uh, it was still skin cancer time in Michigan when it wasn't. So anyway, just to clarify that. <laughs> Folks who bathe in Michigan, hold on, hold on, hold on, spend much longer in the
Italian reggae. <laughs> what kind of song was that? That's a good one. <laughs> That's German. Uh, that's German. So I, I have German. So I mean, I just naturally gravitate towards these German and Irish melodies. I guess because I'm German and Irish. I don't know. That's kind of simple. So that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The melodies. There are millions of melodies out there. There are millions of incidents that are asking to be put to melody. So, you know, that's what it is. That's what folk music is. It's got. It's like this language that we have at our disposal. And that's ground zero. That's where Bach got his ideas. That's where all these people, and they're just much more sophisticated than we are, but we're all speaking the same language. So we have something different to say. We need something that speaks to our experience, mm -hmm. right? Like daylight savings time in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> Big crisis. <laughs> hey, uh, the, the, the test case I have with my uh, grandfather we were looking through his old letters, 1910s. He grew up in the country, and he's writing 10 years later or something, or maybe 30, 20 years later to his aunt. And he's describing, like when he was 8, 9, 10 years old, he'd be on the farm. He said, out of nowhere, all the farmers would just come. He never knew when. They would just come, and they would just start singing. And he said it was like heaven on earth. Hmm. You know, They would just do it naturally. Singing about what? Though? Well, you, you got the impression they're all Lutheran, you know, <laughs> or they were Norwegians, and you got the impression it was religious. I mean, mm -hmm. you, 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 you mm -hmm. didn't there's, tell you. There's an example. I already sang the song. It's uh, in the sweet by and by. When in New York City in 1913, the people were standing on the subway platform, and the news spread that the Lusitania had just been sunk. The crowd spontaneously broke into singing in the sweet by and by. Hmm. because they all knew this song and they all thought it was appropriate. In 1973, I was flying back from Germany on Icelandic Airlines, which is the way, the cheap flight. And the flight was delayed, and so they took us to Trier, and we had all the wine we could drink. So you had a, all this plane load of drunk Americans. <laughs> and we all get back on the plane, and what do you do when you're drunk? What do you want to do? You want to sing, right? And so what did we sing? What was the one song we all knew? Was it in the sweet by and by? It was the Mickey Mouse song. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a plane load of drunk Americans. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. -E. <laughs> it was yeah. terrible. That's right. That shows you that shows you the decline in culture that That's took right. place during. Yes, yes. So I actually did a little study into the pop scene, um, which is derivative of rock, right? And uh, found out that like, uh, a lot of these bands like Katy Perry, uh, Katy Perry uh, Britney Spears, NSYNC, Factory Boys, it's all written by 35, you know, 35, 45 year old men. It's all a monoculture, basically, that they've created, an obviously insidious monoculture, right? But, uh, and they even said that they branch out and it, it, there's like a pendulum swing to this, you know, grungy rock in the 90s and then they swing back and you're in this bubblegum pop phase. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the model culture they established and the way they, the way they just swallow up any kind of outbreak of any other type of music in, uh, in, the, in the music industry, it seems like. There's an immense amount of control on there is. any breakout of anything new. You're right. Everything you hear on the radio has been approved by someone mm -hmm. right. for a purpose that is not your good. It may be to sell something, it may be to arouse the passions, it may be one thing or another, but that's what you're getting. And the only way you're going to get around it is by doing your own stuff. So it's a little bit like food. Right? You can go to McDonald's and you get a cheap piece, uh, piece of food that will be genetically modified and it will taste good, but it will not be good for your health. And so the alternative is what? It's have your wife make food for you, right? Because I don't make food. That's why I got married. <laughs> but we have, I know we have other people. We have people here who do make food. Yeah, Joe, Joe Sorry, right. but I'm not, I'm not well, one of them. Making yeah, some. You making made food. Songs. So I'm playing the mandolin while my wife is making food. <laughs> that's that's Henry's got that's a good. question over here. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm a few years younger than you, but I have all those same songs in my head that you have that can't be erased. From 1962 to 60, 69, when I quit listening really to the radio, and uh, you know, you look, and those songs in the early 60s were 
kind of innocent, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of pure. And in just a few years' time, that whole scene changed. I encourage anyone to Google the group Searchers. They were from England, and they were the most polite, handsome fellows in 1963 making really good music. And you look at those same groups five years later, and they just look like beasts. What happened in that short well, period there is of time? Well, there is a story that, uh, uh, that Tavistock got involved and that the, uh, the, the government got involved in using this as a form of basically destroying the anti-war movement. This, I think there's a good, uh, a good probability that, uh, let's say, the Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead was a front for a man by the name of Owsley who produced LSD. There's, uh, I think you can make a plausible case that the Grateful Dead existed to distribute LSD to a group of people who were engaged in an uprising against the government to obliterate that uprising. My first roommate in Madison was a, a deadhead. He dropped out after about a month, and he just he kept following. As the, I said, Madison was a hotbed. The, the Jews and the communists had decided they were going to take over Madison. And uh, why Madison, by the way? I why not the University of Illinois? Or you Michigan? know, I don't know. I why? don't know. Maybe, I think it was because of the socialist nature of Wisconsin, that it was founded by revolutionaries and the 48ers, and they felt that there was some type of residence. There was a Wall Street Journal article that came out uh, when my daughter was at uh, IU Bloomington. And the, this Jewish kid from New York said, it's the new Madison. Now, nobody but me understood that, what he was talking about. But this kid, because he was a Jew, it was about, the whole point of the article is Jews from New York City are now coming to IU Bloomington. He knew because that's their culture, and they, he knew that there was this attempt to take over Madison. Why I, I wasn't in on the planning, so I can't really give you. And Radish doesn't say why Madison. I was at the uh, UW Madison at the uh, Daily Cardinal newspaper. Grossman, Cohen, Schwartz, all the leadership were Jewish guys from New York City. That's right. That's it. Read wow. if you if you want the fr uh, f the first hand story. It's Ron Radish's book Commies. He talks about it. Why why Madison? Uh, I think it's because of the socialist heritage of with the state of Wisconsin. So, you know, at one point you speak, and I, I heard an interview that you gave regarding one of your books on how uh, uh, a Catholic ghetto uh, communities were obliterated uh, purposefully. That's the slaughter of cities. Right. And, um, you know, in, in keeping with that concept and what we've been talking about today in terms of cultural, uh, the importance of cultural, you know, uh, uh, music rega regarding our faith and, uh, and our aspirations. What advice would you give to all of us? Make music. <laughs> <laughs> you've well, got you've got this great opportunity. This is a man who leads choirs. That's right. He's got you've Mozart. got this you've got this. It's not Mo it's Handel. It's not Mozart. Oh, Handel. I'm sorry. But you've got that. You've got this great resource here, who could take you to a, a much higher level than I've been a wild rover. You know what I mean? That's that's the that's this will increase the solidarity of your group if you do this, because that's what music does. It will increase the ethnic solidarity among you, and it will raise your consciousness. And that's what we need to do. What, what is our end Okay, well, Catholic forget. American. Five years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 As far as going to, to mass, I'm yeah. sorry, I got to talk about mass. Yeah. And as far as rock and roll, and as far as music in the mass, where it's just really difficult to go to church and go to mass when there's this rock and roll stuff going absolutely. on. You're absolutely, you're absolutely. Where I feel like the conservative radical dude, and it's really hard. I need a cuss box when I go to church. And I mean, is there any any any? Any, any comments about that? What, what can we do about that as far as start rock and roll? Start a skull at, at your parents. Well, I have one, <laughs> yeah. I have one, but I mean, uh, when you go to the <laughs> Novus Order of or Odo world. You know, I got the money just, quote. I got the money quote for you from Michael Davies from many years ago. Quote the traditional mass. Uh -huh. it's, it's the, the new mass and the traditional mass and <laughs> liturgical music and old. He said, quote, it's like putting your grandmother in a new skirt. You just can't. <laughs> but what about rock and roll? And, and, and the whole world is like, you know, 
Christian music and all this crap that's going on in, in uh, the uh, when you go to church on Sundays, if you go to the Novus Ordo or to a world. I mean, if, if I don't go to Latin Mass it's, it, and I have to go to this, it's like it's really difficult. Any con- conversation don't go. about that? I don't. Go. I don't. But well, I mean, that solves that problem. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, you are a position I'm fine, I'm fine, where, where it, you could do something about it. I mean, most yeah. of us are helpless. You could volunteer in a parish and start a school because yeah. you could actually I lead it. So well, you've got no reason to done. complain. Do it's that. your yeah. own damn fault. No, no, it's just very difficult. To you can't, do. this is, the music is not appropriate. The right. music that I play is great music. I love this music, but it's not appropriate for sacred music. It's just not. You should not do it. Yeah. Keep these things separate. separate. You don't want drinking right. songs at mass. Right. Exactly. Yes, sir. Danny boy at mass, though. So we talked, a little, we talked about romanticism and sort of Wagner as a sort of musical result of that. And we talked a little bit about Jansenism, Enlightenment, Protestantism of thinking like the 18th century. Is there a musical expression of all that? Because I mean, that's the period we think of as classical music, or it's the height, but at the same time, you've got. Freemasonry, you've got the Enlightenment, you've got Protestantism, okay. you've got Jansenism. Is okay. that influencing okay. music at all? The free, what's the Freemasonic opera? Oh, uh, uh, the magic flute. Yeah. That's the that's him, Mozart trying to deal with Freemasonry. That's the Freemasonic opera. What's a revolutionary people? What we're talking about What's the the, the prototype of revolutionary movement would be uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony? Where it's always threatening to get out of control, but he always sort of brings it back. You know, you always send up on the same key, and this is the, the boundary that Bob under the chalkboard. He sailed off and he never came back. You know, he left the key of D and never returned. You know what I mean? So you can, if you go through it, you can find all these analogs to what's going on in, in, in the music. But in terms of Freemasonry, listen to the magic flute. So, so in terms of of, of a counter-revolutionary, it's almost too strong a word, but just a bunch of guys getting together and singing. Um, but in, singing in such a way that is binding. And, you know, uh, we talked a little bit, just real briefly, about the, the sort of disenfranchisement uh, of the uh, uh, of the uh, of what we're experiencing now, you know, Pope Francis came out with his latest, right? And it used to be that, you know, you had to speak out in a major way to be sort of you know, catapulted out there. Now you say one little little thing, and you know, the, the establishment comes down against you. So more and more, we're kind of out there, and we have to kind of bind together. So here we are around us, and right around this room. I mean, my gosh, we have so many. We have so varied in terms of our backgrounds, both ethnic and experiences, and everything else. Look at us. We're just a big varied motley crew right and so how do we kind of bind together music. you're saying music so music. So, so help us what out is here the though. one thing we but, all, okay but, but help us like, what kind of music it's doing a mass we need to do a mass together oh my <laughs> god right. so now, now, i mean we, i don't think i don't think right, we're yeah, talking we about oh getting together and doing polyphony for crying out loud no, no, you know you, chant normal. Uh, you know we're talking about go okay. ahead all right public service announcement jack asking to put in so the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe is having a festival of sacred music, the first one ever next Saturday. Actually, the 23rd, sorry. Two weeks. Um, so we're having this seven. Is yeah, this, this is two different events. So the festival oh, okay. of sacred music is the 23rd. Wow. Seven of the top school, uh, chamber, high school chamber choirs coming to the shrine from Rockville, Illinois, Chicago, to Minneapolis, St. Paul. Anyway, if you're around, come to it. It should be great. Mm-hmm. And then the next weekend... Um, which is April 30th on Saturday, um, the Canons Regular of St. John Cantius are coming to do a Sancta Misa Extraordinary Forum Workshop starting at 9.15 in the morning, and they're going to do a 10.30 Misa Cantata, and I don't know how much you all know about the Canons Regular, but many regard them as one of the foremost authorities, at least in um, sacred music. Yeah. So, I, I belong to an organization called the Canons of Loose. Loose cannons. All right. Full figures. No, it doesn't make it. It's my time. Oh, fair enough. 
I'm saying, I'm saying that's fine, but that is sacred music. Yeah, yeah. I don't, this, I don't, is, I don't this is folk music. I'm not, I'm not saying anything else. Let me throw out one thing here. You know, my son went to this, um, what is it called? When, um, it's, it's not connected with the remnant, but it's the remnant folks. It's it's Michael Maddox. And they go to this place. In Italy. Yeah, in Gardone. Italy. Gardone. Yeah. John Rail. Yes, yes, exactly. What is the thing called, though? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like this oh, right. colloquium thing. Anyway, Michael Davies used to go, and he rested in peace anyway. My son went to that one time, and they, after, they had all these great, you know, Catholic talks and everything, they sit down, they sing, but they sing, you know, the piano man. Sing us a song, you're the piano yeah, man. Sing, sing us a song it. tonight. You know, I think now, it's a good I get this I get the sense from this group on the one hand that we don't say, Oh, icky pooey. That's right. that's <laughs> that's secular, that's bad. Well it's right. not bad. It's, 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 it's a good song. Song. Listen, it's a well, that's, song. Listen, that's why I play. And we all know it, for goodness that's sake. Right. Exactly. And I, I think yeah. you have yeah. to deal with this on a song by song basis. Yes, yes. Okay. Because yes. there's this yes. element of yes. snobbery involved here. Right. Like, right. Uh, Will You Love Me Tomorrow? Is it, you kind of look down your nose at it because there's one of these girl groups that you know, dance mm -hmm. do like this. But it's a nice song. It's a nice and song. And I think yeah. what you have to have, it's like your ability to express yourself politically. You have to have your ability to express yourself musically, and you have to say, "No, that's a nice song." That's right. I don't I care what you're saying. I think I agree with him. The piano, I, I, a piano man is a nice song, and I play it myself. Yeah, but what could be that's better right. than to get a group of guys together to do the propers and to do the ordinary section of a mass together, and, ha and have a mass together, and have, and have somebody come and do, get a priest to come and do a. a yeah, we do that sometimes. Yeah. I mean, we <laughs> But to have this whole yeah. group of guys to get yeah, together sure. and actually yeah. sing versus talking about Art. other people things. But that's, to actually that's, do that. Yeah. I agree with you. That's a, that's a good idea. It's just that that's sacred music. I, I, I that's agree. sacred music. There, there's there's a third possibility that I think you should uh, consider. And uh, I didn't play any of the Irish tunes. All the Irish tunes I play every Monday night, they're all dance music. And the one thing we do not have when I play them is dancing. You just don't have dancing. This room is perfect mm, for yeah, singing right. and dancing. Exactly. These boards are great. You might wreck your floor, but I mean, it's, it's, it's no. great. And that's no. another possibility. <laughs> well, that's building, ca building Catholic culture. And, and uh, in Madison, uh, where we go, we go to Mass, there's a, a Catholic youth group that gets together once a month, and they have a dance. That's right. And it's, it's, uh, it's uh, square dancing, contra dancing, a little bit of English country dance, a little bit of swing, some, some yeah. ballroom. And that is building Catholic culture because they, we need music, number one. Yeah. As human beings, we need music. If we don't have right-ordered music that we can celebrate, that, that creates a vacuum, and the world's music will come in to ourselves and our, our children, and it will lead us. Amen. I mean, Dr. Jones, yeah. when you have came, I, I, I expected it to be a poo-poo on music, but it's not, and I'm just I'm excited. Of, I'm yeah, I know, and uh, it's exciting to me. I, don't, I'm, I mean, I'm happy. I don't know any of this stuff, right? So this is exciting to me because... You know, there's something natural about music that seems good, right? Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, yeah, it, the, the point of music is uh, you know, detrimental to culture. So that's right. That's right. That's, we're trying to build a culture. We're trying to build a culture. We're living in the ruins. We're trying to come together like shipwrecked sailors, you know, on the beach, trying to pick up this piece like Robinson Crusoe. Maybe I can make a raft if I put the That's what we're doing culturally. And the, 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 the sign that you've arrived is when you can have a dance. When you can have these people dancing, when you make your own music, your people are dancing and your people are singing. Because now you are in control of the culture and you're not dependent on other people to make your culture for you. Because they will do it for you, and you will suffer the consequences. There's an attitude that can be taken towards all of this that's helpful, I think. The episode is only analogical here, but there's a book called Why Catholics Can't Sing. <laughs> yes. I forget the author of it. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, it's, and yes. The, the opening episode is uh, when this man goes, he's traveling, he goes into some big cathedral in New York or Boston, mm -hmm. and is in the back pew, and next to him is a very decorously dressed elderly lady in gray with a gray cap and a white veil hanging down and so on. And when the time, time comes for the handshake of peace, he turns to her and holds her hand out, and she looks at him and says, we don't hold with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the best part of the book. Yeah.
Yeah. Another public service announce announcement. I know it's far away, but uh, there's another men's group in uh, the Madison area. We meet at the State Bank of Cross Plains. Um, the next meeting is the 19th, which is next weekend. Starting a review of Humani Generous uh, with Father Carlo, Juan Carlos Esquera. He's a theologian at the seminary, and he's an amazing professor. So if you want to, I'll leave this here. If you want to come? At, at 6 o'clock, there's a potluck, et cetera, et cetera. We have a couple of representatives here of, of that men's group, so something that we kind of talked about is that there's, you know, men's groups, Catholic men's groups here and there, and it's really good to connect and to just keep it going. I'm going to, I'm going to, I asked Mara to go up and ask the girls if they would come down so that we can sing the homeschooling song. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Adam's family? Are you, are you ready for the homeschooling song? Oh, yeah. Why? Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll think of the Von Trapps. Right. You can, I, I, I have a, if you know this song, yeah, I ask you to join in. <laughs> Give Liam, get over here. <laughs> We're going to sing the homeschooling song. Liam, you can't get out. What are they going to sing?